Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Suburban Rifleman. About a week ago, I was contacted by a company that I was previously unfamiliar with, a company called Discovery Optics, and they asked if I would be interested in checking out one of their rifle scopes and producing a review on it. And of course I said, yes, I'm certainly not one to turn down free gear. So before I get started, in the interest of full disclosure, uh, this is not a paid uh, review. Actually, it's not a review at all. This is just sort of a preliminary look uh, video, but it's not a paid uh, promotional advertisement. I did receive a scope for free, which we're going to be taking a look at tonight, and we're going to be taking a closer look at it in the future. Um, but I am not being paid for this video. Uh, furthermore, what benefits me also benefits you. Uh, Discovery Optics has uh, offered to give me a discount code, uh, which I will be able to distribute to you. I haven't been given that discount code yet because I haven't produced the video yet. I'm in the process of doing that right now. Um, but I should have it by the time this video is published and you can find it down in the description text uh, down below. Um, Discovery Optics, as far as I know, here in the United States, uh, sells their uh, scopes and uh, potentially other uh, optical equipment uh, exclusively through their storefront on Amazon. I was able to find their scopes for sale uh, on websites in other parts of the world, but I think in the United States they're exclusively available through Amazon, but I will put all of that information in uh, the description text down below. So. When they offered me the scope, they actually, uh, uh, and I accepted, they came back and said, well, we've got a couple of different options for you. One of them is a, uh, a relatively lightweight scope, which is suitable for hunting. And the second choice was a, uh, a higher specification scope that was designed for bench shooting, uh, target shooting, and they said it was quite a bit heavier. And uh, I looked at the specifications of both of the scopes, and of course I picked uh, the target scope. I don't really do an awful lot of hunting anymore. I didn't even get out to bear camp this year, although that was not uh, a result of my not wanting to go. It was a, a result of family obligation. So I think this year I'm going to end up doing almost no hunting at all. But I have hunting rifles. I've got plenty of lightweight hunting scopes. And most of the time now when I take one of my rifles out, I'm headed to the range. I'm shooting off a bench. You guys, if you've watched my videos before, you know I like shooting at steel at longer ranges. So of course, I picked the target scope, um, which does have uh, some higher specifications than the other scope they were offering. Um, and I did take into account, they said it was quite a bit heavier. Now, when the, the shipping uh, box arrived at my house and I picked it up, I thought, my gosh, they must have sent me both scopes. But I was wrong. They actually did only send me the heavier scope. But boy, is it ever heavy. This scope weighs about two and a half pounds. And it might be the most overbuilt looking scope I've ever seen in my life. But we'll take a, a closer look at that in a minute. Um, just for your information, this is the model ED-PRS 5 to 25 by 56 SFIR 34 millimeters. Uh, 34 millimeters uh, refers to the diameter of the scope tube. It is a big, big scope uh, in diameter. Should be excellent for light transmission. Um, ED. Uh, indicates that it has ED glass in it. I am currently in the process of asking Discovery Optical what exactly ED glass means. Um, they don't uh, publish that specification in any of their literature. Uh, on some third-party sellers' uh, websites overseas, they have described the ED glass as being uh, Hoya, FCD 100, which is in fact a Japanese ED glass. ED, by the way, stands for extra or extreme low dispersal. Um, it has uh, optical qualities in the glass that uh, prevent scattering of light. This is especially helpful uh, for clarity and uh, resolution and 
also to prevent chromatic shift. A lot of you who have experience, as I do, with cheaper high magnification scopes, particularly at those higher magnifications, you tend to have chromatic shifts, chromatic abnormalities that cause weird color things to go on. Objects get a sort of halo of light around them. Sometimes it, it looks like a rainbow. You get like a spectrum effect. Um, ED glass is supposed to prevent that. And from my initial look at this scope, it looks like it actually works pretty well in this scope, but we'll get into that more in the future. Um, ED glass is created by adding, uh, I think, calcium fluoride uh, to the glass and uh, Whatever that does, it, it changes the refractive in, index of the glass or whatever, uh, but it really does seem to work. So, as I said, this is a big, heavy scope. It comes in a very substantial box, which is very nicely made. Um, it took me about five minutes on the internet doing some sleuthing to find out a little bit more about Discovery Optical Instruments LTD, uh, located, I think, in the Hunan province of China. And you can go on the internet and very quickly discover who their main uh, customer is. You may not be familiar with Discovery Optics, but you've probably seen some of their uh, products, uh, albeit under a different brand name. Um, so the scope is very nicely packed in a box with uh, nested cutouts for all of the components. We'll go over that a little bit. Um, of course, the scope comes with an instruction manual, although this instruction manual is very generic. It's not at all specific to the scope uh, in question. It does have a copy of their limited lifetime warranty in the back, though, so that's pretty nice. Um, you can check that out. The scope also came with a microfiber cloth for cleaning the lenses. They refer to it as a chamois cloth, but it's pretty standard microfiber cloth. Um, this is just a plastic bag that the scope was wrapped in. Obviously, I've had the scope out of the box already because I've done some testing with it. Um, there's a card that comes with your scope, which has a lot of the technical specifications, uh, mostly dimensions and optical properties, um, mostly dimensions. Uh, also, it lists that the that the scope is shockproof, waterproof, fogproof, uh, nitrogen filled. Keep in mind, proof always means resistant. Nothing is truly shockproof. If I threw this thing out this third story window onto the concrete, I guarantee it would uh, be affected by shock. Um, lastly, this is kind of nice, which often doesn't come with uh, relatively inexpensive Chinese scopes. We've got a... Uh, quality control checklist here, which has the date of manufacture handwritten in, the serial number of the scope, uh, some handwritten data, and a whole bunch of uh, inspector stamps in there. I don't know what this adds up to, but I can tell you um, it shows that Discovery is going to a certain extent anyway to guarantee quality. And that's always a good thing. Uh, before we get to the scope itself, we'll go through some of the accessories. Um, it did come with 34 millimeter uh, rings. As I already stated, we've got a 34 millimeter diameter scope body. 34 millimeter scopes are becoming more and more popular, but 34 millimeter rings are not the easiest thing to find. Of course, you can always order them and have them shipped to you, but uh, these are actually very nicely machined. Um, they've got the torque specifications uh, printed for the screws, both the uh, mounting screws and the clamping screws. Um, each ring comes with an extra screw in case you would lose one or uh, shear one somehow, and it comes with an Allen key, which is probably total crap. This scope looks pretty good, but I am not a fan of Chinese Allen keys, but we'll see. Um, one thing I wish it maybe had come with a lot, this is clearly a scope which is designed to be used on a precision rifle, at least ostensibly. We'll see 
you know, just how good it is when we start testing it. But a lot of precision rifles today, when people are, are building a precision rifle or setting up a precision rifle, they're, they're working with the AR-15 platform. And straight scope rings like this do not work very well on the AR-15, unless you've got a fully railed fore end. If you're uh, dependent on mounting your scope on the top of the receiver, the geometry of the AR-15 usually puts the scope too close to the shooter's eye. And so you oftentimes need a cantilevered scope mount. At the price of this scope, um, this is very affordable, but it's not cheap. This is close to $400. I don't know what it'll work out to with the discount code. Um, it would have been nice if they would have included a cantilevered scope mount as well to give you the option of either using um, standard rings on, say, a bolt-action rifle or the cantilevered mount for an AR-15. But that's neither here nor there. Cantilevered mounts are relatively inexpensive. Um, it also came with a scope leveling kit. Um, I have never used one of these before, but it is a pretty cool concept. Uh, it's a series of interlocking wedges or ramps that fit together to index off the bottom of uh, the turret housing to get that the flat surface on the bottom of the scope turret housing perfectly parallel with the flat surface on the top of your Picatinny or Weaver rail. Uh, I'm anxious to try using this, uh, although I've never done so before. It also came with a nice lens pen. Uh, this is pretty standard, just like you would get from Loophold or anybody else. It's got this nice soft bristled brush for removing dust off the lenses. And we've got our little uh, microfiber pad pen here for uh, wiping any smudges or fingerprints that might get on your lenses off. That's a nice little addition. Not really worth a lot, but it just shows an extra bit of care. And there's also a, uh, a small steel stud in here, which is going to screw into the power ring on the scope and uh, act as a quick uh, adjust lever on the scope. I'm not installing that yet because for the time being, I'm keeping the scope in its box. When this goes on, a, when the scope goes on a rifle, this will go into the power ring and probably get fixed with uh, some blue Loctite. Also, the scope comes with three uh, various eye shades. There are two shorter ones and uh, one longer one here. And the machining on these is very nice. One thing I'm immediately struck with, or struck by with this scope, is the quality of the machining. On a lot of relatively inexpensive Chinese scopes, when you start looking inside things like sunshades, um, things really fall apart. Um, threads don't mate up very well. These go together very smoothly, very nicely. All the machining on everything on this scope looks very good. Um, you could, of course, screw all three of these sunshades together and have one enormously long sunshade off the front of your scope. I don't know. Uh, it'd have to be pretty bright out to require all of that shading, but... Uh, it's still nice that they included those. And now we get to the scope itself. And I can already see the comments, people saying, what, it took 15 minutes to get the scope out of the box. Learn to use the, uh, the scroll bar down at the bottom there. So um, again, this is a five to 25 by 56. Um, it does feature ED glass, ostensibly. Um, it does have a 34 millimeter tube. 56 millimeter objective. We've got nice flip up scope caps here, which are actually pretty positive. Usually the flip up caps that come on, on inexpensive Chinese scopes are next to useless, but these actually pop open and close with some authority. They fit very tightly onto the front of the uh, uh, objective bell. Uh, and then there's just a removable cap in the back here, which has 
a very strange logo on it. I'll throw up a, uh, a close-up of that. Maybe somebody out there can identify it. This is not Discovery Optics logo. It's clearly not just some random design, but I have no idea what that is. And now we've got our scope. We've got a focusable ocular lens. It's the standard twisting arrangement. That moves smoothly, but with some resistance. I don't think it's liable to move, but it does uh, focus rather easily and very, very smoothly. We've got our power adjustment ring here. This is much stiffer, as it should be. Um, goes from 5 uh, to 25 and that quick throw lever will thread right in there, so it'll it'll just rotate right around across the top of the scope when the when the scope is mounted. Um, again, that's quite a bit stiffer than the focus ring, but that's a good thing. Um, oh, this is a first focal plane scope, by the way. I forgot to mention that um, we've got a MRAD reticle inside here, uh, which has the standard. Christmas tree pattern. It's very similar to um, a lot of other MRAD reticles, uh, particularly from companies like Vortex. Um, there's a couple other companies that uh, that make this sort of Christmas tree style MRAD reticle. It's got um, not only holdover, but also windage marks um, going out pretty darn far. Uh, I think you've got plenty of adjustment uh, uh, in your hold over and your hold off with this reticle to do most shooting at most ranges. Um, and of course the uh, reticle gets bigger as you zoom in. It's actually quite large at 25 power. Um, our windage knob, this is one thing that struck me about the scope immediately when I took it out of the box is the size of these turret knobs. They're like uh, cat food cans. Our windage knob moves nice and freely. Nice positive clicks. They're not super crisp, but they're not mushy at all. They could be a bit more clicky, but they're very, very positive and very, very clean. The elevation knob is much the same way. Um, the clicks are maybe a bit less positive on the elevation knob, but they are still quite solid. Um, both of these uh, have resettable zeros. Uh, the windage knob has four Allen head set screws around the periphery of the knob. You can loosen those. I'm sure this is splined. You can pull the, no the, uh, the, the knob cap off reset the zero, put it back on and tighten those down uh, to reset your zero. Um, the elevation knob has a large uh, silver colored plug here, which threads out and you can just pull the cap off, turn it and reset your zero. Now the elevation knob does say that it has a zero stop. If there's a zero stop on this elevation knob, I haven't figured out how to use it yet, and it is not in the instruction manual. And I don't see, usually a, a, an elevation or a zero stop will have a steel pin um, with some sort of shoulder that will come against it and you, know, you can reset to zero without looking at the knob. I don't see that that's here, but it says it, so maybe I just haven't figured out how to use that yet. We've got a side parallax knob here, which is uh, adjustable from 25 out to 500 and then eventually a th uh, infinity. And I'm assuming that these uh, graduations are marked in meters and not yards. Um, it would make sense. This is uh, graduated in, uh, in mil rads, not minutes of angle. And also the scope is made in China. China, last time I checked, is on the metric system. And we have an illuminated reticle. This knob on the inside of the parallax adjustment knob is our illumination uh, knob. And there are markings from one to six. I can tell you, uh, I don't have video to splice in here, but uh, at six, this is visible in broad daylight, the illuminated uh, cross in the middle, although I can't imagine why 
you would need that in broad daylight, but maybe against a very dark background. Um, at one, it's just barely visible indoors or in very, very low light situations, but it pretty much covers the gamut. One thing I like about uh, this illumination knob is there are off points in between each of the six power settings. So you don't have to turn the knob all the way one way to turn it off, turn it all the way the other way um, to get it to the brightness level you want. You can say, for instance, go to six and right back to off. You can go to one, right back to off and any other uh, marking along the dial. So that's kind of nice. And the battery door, I think it's a CR 23 whatever battery uh, is underneath the Discovery logo here. This is just a cap that screws off. That's pretty standard. So um, yesterday in the bright sun, I took this scope out into the field. I got it set up on a solid mount and aimed at a patch of grass or an area of grass about 150 to 200 yards away. And I got my camera set up as best I could. And I'll start throwing up some video here. At five power, the reticle is very, very sharp and very, very clear. The image through the scope is very, very sharp and very, very clear. As you would imagine, you've got a 56 millimeter objective lens on here and a 34 millimeter tube, which should provide excellent light transmission. Unless you had really, really terrible glass, which this is supposed to actually be pretty good glass, you should have a very, very bright uh, and very sharp image at five power. And you do. Um, another thing that struck me about this scope is the field of view is clear right out to the periphery, especially at lower magnification. There's absolutely zero distortion all the way out to the edge of the field of view. Also, the field of view, when you have your eye uh, box set correctly, the field of view basically takes up the entire diameter of the back of the scope. You don't have that huge obnoxious black ring with uh, sort of an image in the middle of it. Um, this really gives you a very nice wide field of view. Um, but at five power, the reticle is very, very small, particularly for my old eyes. I have a hard time reading the markings on it. Uh, it's absolutely tiny. And actually, you'll see in the video that I put up, my camera is so small, in fact, that my camera had a very difficult time focusing on the reticle. Uh, when we bumped it up to 10 power, I think the scope really starts to come into its own. You can see in the video clip that I'll put up that uh, my camera had no problem focusing on the reticle. The image is still very sharp and bright. Um, you can clearly see blades of grass moving there. Going up to 15 power, um, the reticle starts to dominate the image. It's, uh, it's starting to get very large, but the image is still very bright and very crisp. And you can still see that it, uh, the uh, field of view is almost the complete diameter of the scope. When we crank it all the way up to 25 power, things do start to break down a little bit. The image is still crisp. The image is still bright. Um, you may not be able to see it that well on the video screen. A camera's lens does not focus the same way your eye does, and it's hard to get an accurate depiction. Secondly, at 25 power, the eye box uh, on this scope becomes very, very tight, and it was difficult for me to get my camera lined up exactly correctly. So uh, believe me when I say that the image looks better than what you're seeing on your screen, but uh, I think even on, on video, it looks pretty darn good. Uh, so I'm sure this video is now like my camera is saying this video is like 30 minutes long. So I think I'm going to cut it short at this point. Hopefully I can edit some of that out. Um, but that's my initial impressions of this scope. It's very um, robustly manufactured. The fact that every all the working parts on this are just enormous tells me it should be able to take a beating. Um, another nice thing about making big parts as opposed to tiny little fiddly parts is they're, they're easier to uh, 
calibrate. So hopefully um, we're going to start doing some testing in the near future. I hope to get out to the range sometime after New Year. I did a lot of shooting last winter. And I would like to do that again this winter. We will do accuracy testing with this scope. We will do repeatability testing, tracking testing. One thing I didn't take into account when I uh, told Discovery that I would review their scope for them is the fact that this scope is clearly designed to be mounted on a centerfire precision rifle. And it wasn't until I had agreed to do this that I realized I don't really have a center fire rifle with standard mounts sitting around here that I can quickly throw this scope onto. So my plan, at least in the short term, is actually to mount this on my 22 target rifle. Actually, if we're going to do all of that accuracy testing and tracking testing and everything, center fire ammo is pretty expensive right now. So it actually might be good uh, to do a bunch of that with uh, rim fire ammo. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing mounted up. Uh, hopefully the next time you see it, we'll be out at the range doing some shooting. Overall, my initial impression, I'm very impressed with this uh, scope. Uh, I'm very anxious to see how it works out. Um, the Chinese are clearly getting better and better and better at manufacturing things. And there are a few other new startup companies that have been getting great press. Uh, Arkin comes to mind. Um, I'm not saying this is the equivalent of that. There's very, very little feedback on these so far. Uh, but from what I can see, it really looks to be fantastically built. So uh, anyway, I'm going to cut this off and I'll catch you all in the next one. Later, guys. Listen to the song of my people.